Hello, I'm Sarah Vangla. I use she, her pronouns. I work for Ohio Health with the Family Medicine Residency and Primary Care Sports Medicine Fellowship. These slides were put together in conjunction with BJP and our radiologist in Columbus at Radiology Inc. in Columbus, Ohio. Um, this is part of our AMSSM Family Medicine Radiology Project, and today we're going to be discussing cervical spine. Our objectives are to learn a systematic approach to reading MSK x-rays of cervical spine, to review three common adult findings on x-ray, and to discuss the clinical condition correlation of these x-ray findings. The three most common views of the cervical spine that are obtained are the AP, as you can see on the left, looking at them from front to back, the lateral, looking at the patient from the side, and the oblique in which the patient is turned a little bit so that you can actually see more for men. We're gonna dive into these in a little bit more detail. On the AP view, what I first look at are each vertebral body or each of these building blocks to make sure that they are relatively equal in height and symmetry. I will also look at the intervertebral space looking in between each of these blocks to see if that is relatively maintained throughout. To help assess alignment and how straight the patient is looking at the x-ray, I will look at these um, increased sclerotic areas in the center of each vertebral body, which is actually the spinous process that you're looking at on an end. The other thing that can be helpful when you're looking at the AP view of the, of the cervical spine is looking to see where that first rib is. The majority of the time that first rib is supposed to come off of the first thoracic vertebral body, but occasionally you can have a patient that has one off of a cervical body, which can cause some impingement in the thoracic outlet. The other thing that is helpful to look at here are the uncovertebral joints. These are the posterior lateral corners of each vertebral body, and it helps with um, the movement of the cervical spines. In this particular view, you can also see this patient has a very patent airway coming down, so we, that's why you see this uh, radiolucency overlying the cervical, uh, ver cervical vertebral bodies. On the lateral view, again, I will start by assessing each vertebral body to say that they are maintaining the relative height um, and space and shape. I'll also look at that intervertebral space to again main sure, make sure that that is maintained. The other benefit of the lateral view is you can take a look at how those vertebral bodies are joining. So on this particular vertebral body here, you can see this here is the superior articulate process the inferior articulate process, which joins with the vertebral body below it, and that one's the superior articulate process. And the in-between space is that pars intraarticularis. This again has a lot to do with the motion of the cervical spine. We can also look at the space in between these processes to say, again, are these maintained or are they starting to lose that space? And then most posteriorly, you can see the spinous processes throughout. When I'm looking at the alignment of a cervical spine, I usually look at the anterior line of those vertebral bodies, that midline of those vertebral bodies, and then again at that posterior line of the spinous processes to ensure that the patient is well aligned. It's also helpful to look at the soft tissues anteriorly. So when you have swelling of that those prevertebral soft tissues, it can be a sign of infection like discitis or osteomyelitis. And finally, when we dig into the oblique view, um, again, this can help you identify a few different things for the patient. Pretty typically, like we've already gone, gone over, that first rib is usually off the thoracic vertebrae, so then you can count up from there to say it's C7, C6, 5, 4, 3, and 2 is up here. The huge benefit of the oblique view is that you can see the neuroforamen or where all of the nerves are supposed to come out. Now again, you can see those uncle vertebral joints are just to the anterior part or just in front of those neuroforamen. And if they have a buildup or increased arthritis here, it could potentially narrow, be one of the reasons that they are narrow in that neuroforamen. And then posteriorly, when you're looking at your facets, again, 
where these facets are connected or these facet joints, you, if you have a lot of arthritis, it could be a reason that someone narrows um, within that neuro, uh, neuroforamen. To move on to three common adult conditions that we'll see, I wanted to discuss the straightening of the cervical spine or loss of cervical lordosis, findings for degenerative change, and, and fusion hardware and what that looks like. So when we talk about loss of cervical lordosis, when we're looking at the alignment of these vertebral bodies in the anterior, middle, and posterior columns, you can see everything is very straight as opposed to having a normal curvature. This can be due to a variety of reasons. One, it could just be patient positioning. Two, it could be because this patient's muscles back here are extremely spasmed, and so they are holding their neck extremely straight to protect it, or because of pain. Um, and three, you can see this if the patient's in a cervical collar, or if the patient has an infection, like a discitis or osteomyelitis. Now in this particular x-ray, there are no increases in the soft tissue or no anterior soft tissue swelling. So this is less likely to be a infection and more likely to be either secondary to positioning um, or muscle spasm that's going on that you can't actually see very well. The next most common thing that I see in my practice is degenerative changes of the cervical spine. So, when we look at those vertebral bodies, again, they're all relatively maintained in their height. However, in between these two vertebral bodies, we have loss of that intervertebral disc height space. In addition to that, you can see some of the classic findings of arthritis where we have increased end plate sclerosis or a brighter weight along those particular verte vertebral bodies. Anteriorly, you can also see osteophyte formation here and here, um, which is again, that body trying to compensate or that signs of our, that there is osteoarthritis going on. And then again, when you look posteriorly, you can see increased facet sclerosis or that brighter white in between and narrowing of these facet joints. So I would say this facet joint and this facet joint have less space than this or this one, and this one is particularly well, well preserved. So you can really see those differences here on this lateral spine. Finally, we wanted to go through hardware. So hardware is going to be more radio opaque than most bones. But we'll say um, uh, this film is not, it does not have particularly good penetration of x-ray, um, of the x-rays, but when you're looking at it, you can still see that hardware um, that is adjoining uh, the anterior cervical, uh, the cervical bodies from anteriorly. So this is pretty typical of what you might see for an anterior cervical disectomy and fusion. I would say the most important things to do when you see hardware in the body is to compare it to prior. So you can say, is that positioning what it used to be or has it changed? And then when you're looking for problems with hardware, you're often looking for lucency around the hardware or a darker coloration around the hardware where that hardware is starting to shift or back look like it's starting to back out of where it's supposed to be. So in summary, please always be sure to check for alignment and spacing in your cervical spine. Understand when oblique views are helpful, particularly in the case if you're looking for nerve impingement. And I would say MRI is definitely more precise in identifying that nerve impingement because you can definitely have soft tissue changes, not just bony changes that impinge on those neuroforamen. Please make sure to look for changes around hardware by comparing to prior x-rays. Thank you for your attention today um, in our talk on the cervical spine.